Well, Christ is the English for the Greek word Christos, which is the uh, same as the Hebrew Hamashiach, which is the Messiah. So Messiah, that's too loud, please. The Messiah, that's too loud, please. Messiah, Messiah, thank you, is, is the same as Christ, the Old Testament Messiah. The first proto-evangelical Messiah was in Genesis 3.15, immediately after the fall. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Romans 5 says, Therefore, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. The devil didn't do it. The woman didn't do it. Adam, full well, he was not deceived. And God had already told Adam, in the day that you eat of the tree of knowledge, in that day you shall surely die. It took many years. The spirit, the Neshema, they breathed in him, not the Numa, but the Neshema. Uh, and the Ruach in Hebrew is that spirit. You see, when Adam died, he lost that communion with God. It was a conditional eternal life. If Adam, I'm going to submit to you, that if Adam had lived the full thousand years, and had obeyed God, that the federal head of the body of Christ and replenishing the earth would have been Adam. However, he blew it. We know that by one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Now, death reigned, sin reigned by death. Romans 5 tells us, sin reigned by death. Well, the law was given that the law given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. For without the law, sin is not imputed, for there is no law. So God gave the law as a boundary, so to speak, that man would know sin, and not only know sin, but that it is exceedingly sinful, above and beyond. There's no shadow of a doubt so the law in, book, in the book of Hebrews tells us the law is a ministration of death, not life. So by the keeping of the law, no flesh shall be saved. Therefore, the law was given that all mankind would be guilty before God and condemned by the law and turn to a Savior. God had already made that provision in Genesis 3.15 as soon as the fall of mankind through by one man. By one man, so is the fence, is by one man, so the free gift is by one. Therefore, God had to have a man. God looked for a man. He was amazed he found none. Therefore, he said, my own arm brought salvation into myself. The Trinitarian doctrine, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. I had an 85-year-old dear woman. I loved her spirit. But she saw the broadcast on the mark of the beast said, I've never seen that before, or anything like that. And uh, most people believe the mark of the beast is a chip that you're going to have planted in your uh, right hand or in your forehead. And uh, they're going to be able to read. You won't even have to go to a, a checkout stand. You just walk through the store, pick up whatever you want. Uh, the scanners automatically scan you. And uh, you're, you don't have to write a check or hit a debit card because it's all on the hand. And you walk out the door, and uh, these, uh, uh, your account is automatically billed, debited for whatever you, uh, you've done. They're already using it in the military to keep up. There's no way you can lose. No, you can't hide because you've got a chip there. But that's not, we, even though it could be part, that is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is a key Z stigma. It's a 603 score and 6. It's not 666. It's 603 score and 6. It's a number of a man. Let him have wisdom count the number of the beast, for it's a number of a man. And it goes on the number of his name. And many people have gone through Caesar Neron, et cetera, et cetera. Kissinger back in those days. They had all kinds of theories about who the beast was. The beast, very simply, the beast is a false son of God. And they worship the beast. Did they think that, you know, I'm actually worshiping a devil? No. They're not, they don't think they're worshiping a devil. They think they're worshiping God. 
It's a false God. We think Antichrist is, you know, a pitchfork and a red lion, scaly tail uh, coming out there. Well, it's not. It is a in lieu of Christ. So, so great a deception. It's not just delusion. It's strong delusion. That God himself sent strong delusion. They believe a lie and be damned because they received not the love of the truth that might be saved but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now the question is, what is righteousness? If you know what righteousness is, then you'll know what unrighteousness is. Righteousness is he came from the Father and he went back to the Father. Proceeded from him, I go back to him. You see, no man has seen God at any time except Jesus Christ who is that God of glory. You see, if I say I know him not, I'll be a liar like unto you, Jesus said. Know there in the Greek is eido, E-I-D-O. It means that I have seen the Father, not only see him, but know him in perfected uh, glory, character, essence, and being as only he, as only a person knows themselves in the soul realm. So there's no such thing as God the Father, God the Son. Where does it say God the Son? It says the Son of God. Why does it say the Son of God? In the beginning of his word, the word was with God, the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, not them, him. Well, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, not heavens, heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God... The Spirit of God, the Hebrew word there's fluttered over the face of the waters. The waters there. Between Genesis 1 and 1 and Genesis 1 and 2, there's literally hundreds of thousands of years. It's only been 6,000 years since God created man in his own image. After his own likeness, Genesis 1:27. But we have cunningly devised fables. If you're the devil and you know you're going to burn, what are you going to strike at at the church? The very foundation. You're going to strike at the very foundation. Because no matter how much you learn in eschatology and uh, the, the seal trumpets and vials and the world events and uh, the things that are coming upon the earth to try the earth, no matter how much of those we know, if we're on the wrong foundation, the house is going to fall. Is the house built? Of course it's built. They go to church. We all go to church to hear the Word of God. Faith can be hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The only difference is somebody built the house. Some built the house upon the sand. The sand shifts, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It's not the rock. That rock is Christ. That rock that followed them out of Egypt. And they said, did you see that rock that's following us over there? And they said, yeah, I've noticed that. Well, that rock was Christ. That rock... When Jesus, and here we go on about the Son of Man today. Everybody believes the Son of Man is humanity. That is the furthest thing from the truth that you can ever think of. The Son of Man. You might want to turn me down. The preacher's going to be here today. The Son of Man is not human. Amen. Man. Amen. If that's the case, it's divine flesh. There's revelation that you can't just take, well, son of man, man, there, that's the, uh, and why, whenever it first mentioned the son of man in Daniel 7, 13, it didn't say Ben Adam, son of Adam, it's Bar Enosh. He used a Chaldean word for Bar, son, Enosh. Why? Because they said, well, it's a mystery. Yes, it's a mystery. Great. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. But everybody said, well, no, the Son of God was manifest in the flesh, Brother Beard. No, the Son of God is not everlasting. Jesus said the things concerning me have an end. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Son of God was manifest in the day that he was born in the city of David, Christ the Lord, and they called his name Jesus. And after the, eight, uh, the eighth day, they took him over to be circumcised and called his name Jesus. Why? Because the eighth day is all the days that you circumcise a child. We're told in the church world, baptism doesn't have anything to do with salvation. Well, what Bible are you reading? You just have faith. 
Faith without works is dead. Can't faith alone save you? You see a man that's naked and hungry. And you see, but thou are clothed and fed. If you do not give him the clothes and the food, you have spoken faith well, but because you did not follow through with giving him the clothes, then that faith avails nothing. But James said, it's dead faith. Faith without works is dead. We have gotten so far off the mark and you think, well, if that's the case, God will shake us one more time. Well, that's exactly what he's going to do. There's a shaking on, going on among the nations, and not the least grain will fall to the ground. But I'll destroy all the sinners of my people by the sword, which say that no evil shall prevent nor overtake us. That evil is not sin. That evil there is a, is a Hebrew word, ra, means tribulation, persecution. The captive of our salvation was made perfect through sufferings. 1 Peter 4.1 says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, be ye therefore likewise minded. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Well, we don't have a cross gospel now. We have a crossless Christianity. People go through tribulations, which work with patience, patience work with experience, experience work with hope. Hope makes not a shame because the love of God shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost. And they're telling you something wrong with you because if you're living for God, God's going to give you the house on the hilltop, cars and lands and lots of money. If you'll just send in $1,000, God will give you 10000 Hallelujah. Brother Brad's still in a wheelchair. They're going to do an operation. He fell out of a tree 30 foot high, moving uh, trailers in on the land that was donated to us out there. Completely smashed the talus bone. I need everybody praying. We're going to believe God for a creative miracle. There is no bone to build on in that left ankle. It's totally gone. That's where the bone sits on the top of the foot, and that's where you pivot. And that's where you move the foot up and down and move this way. Well, it's gone. They took it completely out. His foot over here was actually three inches over to where his leg was. And when I saw that, and the, and the doctor said at that point, he has crushed his talus bone. Well, I didn't know what a talus was, but I do now. A talus bone is that little bone that's about on the top of your carpels there that moves, and, it's, and they took the whole talus bone out and said it was pulverized. Now we're going to believe God. Have the, the signs, miracles, doubts, wonders, and gifts of the Holy Ghost. He heals the sick, cleanses the leper, raises the dead, casts out devils, open blind eyes, loose the dumb shot. The lame walk and the captive went free. God's still the same today, yesterday, and forever. Now, we have told you before, in, in, uh, uh, in, in 19, what was it, what, what year was it Brad was uh, electrocuted, and we took him to Baylor there after he had been dead four hours, what, what year? 89? 2009. 2009, yeah. What, September? September 2009. Sister Melanie, come up here. I want, we're going to go into this revival, and we're going to believe. I've seen, I've seen deaf mute speaking here. Not because of me, we can't heal, we can't heal a net of a headache. But I want to tell you something. When we get in a prayer line over there and you don't believe God heals everybody, somebody said, God don't heal everybody, then you're not going to be with me in that prayer line. Amen. Jesus healed all manner of sickness and disease. Cast out devils, open blind eyes, loose the dumb tongue. Blessed he whosoever is not offended in me. There was not one person that ever came to Jesus that was not healed. Amen. Well, then somebody said, well, he didn't do there many minor miracles. But yeah, because of their unbelief. Amen. Hallelujah unto God. So if we don't believe him, we don't believe he's nothing, well, he's not going to move anything. Somebody said, got in a prayer line, what do you want? I don't want nothing. Well, you're going to get nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah unto God. According to your faith, be it done unto you. Hallelujah unto God. Well, we're going to... Believe God that everybody that walks in under that tent is going to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, well, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's always been the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's always been God. Always will be God. But when that Spirit dwelled in a person, Amen. in a body of flesh and blood, Amen. from then on it was called the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ghost denotes blood. Amen. People hate ghosts. They like holy. They like it, Holy Spirit. 
They like that sensual, devilish. Oh, and they, and they like it whispered as, they, as the familiar spirits peep out of the dust. We're going to shout it from the housetops. We're going to believe God to save that which should be saved. That daily to the church that you said be saved. We're going to believe God to everyone that comes there seeking God is going to, going to receive as they have purpose in their heart. And then they come there believing. And I know God will confirm his word. Signs, miracles, jobs, wonders, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. He will always confirm his word with signs following. Well, somebody said, well, there's three unclean spirits like frogs. These are spirits of devils working miracles. Yeah, but there's a big difference between a devil working a miracle and a miracle of God. There's a big difference there, honey. Because I've seen them throw away crutches. I've seen blind eyes open the next, the next day be looking for their glasses. Trying to find you. Well, if the tumor was gone, I saw a man one night under a gospel tent. This is some 30 years ago. Actually, over that, 35 years ago. That was healed of a tumor. Real big tumor sitting there on his chest. And he said, does that hurt? And his name was Eddie Richardson. He was a preacher friend of mine. And he, boom, and he hit that tumor, and he said, now is that gone? He said, Brother Beard, that thing was gone. The next day, he got up, things swollen, was worse than it ever was, and he couldn't move. Now, what's wrong with that? Does we not, did we not receive the healing? Did his face turn back? No, I'll tell you why. Because the devil will play possum, do whatever he can to deceive. He'll do whatever he can. To sit there, lie, cheat, and steal. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. He has a false, uh, he's an anti in lieu of Christ. It's so close. He has two horns like a lamb. Looks like a lamb. Two horns like a lamb. Speak as a dragon. If you don't know the word of God, I guarantee you're going to be deceived in the last days. God sent him strong delusion, believe a lie, and be damned. What does it come about concerning a day of Christ are gathered together in him? As that day of Christ at hand, be not soon, soon shaking in mind or let her ask from us, as that the day of Christ that has, is at hand. That's our gathering together in him. For that day will not come till it come a falling away first. Somebody said that's a rapture, falling away from the earth. No, it's not. The Spirit speaks expressly, 1 Timothy 4.1, the latter day some shall depart from the faith given heeds to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, uh, forbidding to abstain, for meats, for being a marry and abstain from meats, which God has sanctified by the word of God in prayer, having a conscience seared. The conscience seared with a hot iron. That conscience is in the spirit of man, and there's only one way with the heart man believe it. Somebody said, well, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I said it with an open confession. No, that's not confessing. That's not believing in your heart. It's believing in your head. Amen. Romans 2, 28. I'm going to say it again. And sooner or later, the people that are not literally dug into Trinitarian are going to come out. Come ye out of her, my people. But somebody said, you got all the truth. Nope, but I'm striving for it. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of high calling of God in Christ Jesus. As many as be perfect, be thus binded. And if you be any otherwise minded, God will reveal this even unto you. There's only one way to believe with the heart. Somebody said repentance is all there is to it. No, godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of. There's seven feasts of the Lord. Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Then there's the unleavened bread, his burial. That's where Jesus was three days dead in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And uh, while he was there, he said, Tell no man the vision until after the Son of Man is resurrected from the dead. Why? Because Romans, one three said he is not he declared to be the, he is declared to be the Son of God, declared to be proclamated, preached to be the Son of God through the Spirit by the resurrection from the dead. How do you know that uh, Buddha, Krishna, uh, Allah, uh, Muhammad is not, not not a true messenger of God? Because God didn't raise him from the dead. Jesus said, "Destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it up. I'm God." I'm the one that did it. This I have power to, I freely lay down my life. No man take it from me. I have power to lay it down. I have power to, to take it again. This I received of my father. Who's the father? Jesus, in his humiliation, was a man. Amen. Just like you and just like me. Hebrews 2 said, For as much as the children to protect us of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. 
that in all things he was made like unto his brother. Not they, not the second person of God, and he, God himself. Take heed to yourselves over all the flock of which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. That is not just regular old carnal blood, son. That's the blood of the Holy Ghost. That's the blood of God himself. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 John 3, 16. Hereby perceive the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Therefore, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We have gotten so far off the mark that God is going to do a work in judgment. Why? Because when judgment's in the earth, men will learn righteousness. What is righteousness? I came from God. I go back to God. I proceeded from the Father, I go back to him. What is righteousness? When the Holy Ghost comes into the world, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me, Jesus said, of righteousness, because I go to the Father. Not around him, not on his right hand, that's for us, we'll get into that today. And, uh, but in the throne of God, to the Father. You see, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is the express image of his singular person. He has the brightness of his glory. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How sayest thou then shows the Father? The words that I speak are not mine, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. I do nothing of my own self. There's not one word I'm speaking, I'm doing it of myself. Nobody here can say that. Everything he spoke was that of the Father. When it says, I know him, that is not gnosko. We know him, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit now, in the Holy Ghost. But now he said, I know him. I know the Father. Why? Because that's I-I-D-O. E -I -D -O. That means that I know him as only the person themselves can know them. It's not if he can us go like we will know him in, in the fullness of glory. Because why? Jesus is the Father. But he spoke it in Proverbs. John 16, he said, no more will I speak to you in Proverbs. Well, then why did he speak in Proverbs? Because only them that are pure in heart will see God. Jesus said, all of that, I do nothing myself. What I see the Father do, that I do. The see there is I do. What does that mean? It means the spirit that I am moving in my flesh. It's like this. A hand's invisible. You can't see it. Somebody said, I can see it. Pretend you don't. The hand is invisible. I put a glove over it. But the glove has to be pliable, can't be, can't buck against the hand at all. The invisible hand putting a glove over it. Now, every move that that spirit does, that hand does, you see it manifested out there. That is Jesus as the express image of his person. I can of my own self do nothing. Only that which I see the Father do. What's the see? I do because I am him. It is not a gnosko, an epigonosko. When we see Jesus face to face, we will know him. That's epigonosko. That's the reason he's given us a five-fold ministry. A five-fold ministry, if he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastor, teacher for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, until we all come into the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. That knowledge of the Son of God is epigonosko. It's not just right now that we have the Holy Ghost. We know him no more after the flesh, but after the spirit, we know him. That is a gnosko. That is this level we're in. But God's going to take the church to the next level where when that which is perfect is come. You see, everything now is done in part. We have knowledge in part. Everything is in part. But when that which is perfect is come, all that which is in part will be done away with. Then we will know even as we are known. That know there is epigonosko. You say he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, so we all come to the unity of faith and to the knowledge. That knowledge is face-to-face -face glory with Jesus. The same glory that the Father had given to me, Jesus said in John 7, that same glory I've given to them. Hallelujah. But the church world says, back and says, well, you know I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not being filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. You see, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. That is a present imperfect tense. What does it mean? It means it's still going on. God's still filling you with the Holy Ghost. You see, they were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts the second chapter. Two chapters later, they have a, they have a, a, a persecution against them. Peter prays, Father, glorify thy uh, son. That with all signs, miracles, and wonders, that thou givest us the resurrected, thy holy child, Jesus. 
they were shaken again, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. They were already filled with the Holy Ghost. But they went through some tribulation and persecution. Well, why? David said, in my distress, in my distress, I was enlarged. Did that mean when David was in distress, he grew another two inches? He got another six inches? No, his inner man, though the outward man perish, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. We're growing up into him in all things. Up into who? Christ. Therefore, unto the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, growing up into him in all things. What are those things? Faith is the substance of things, so for the evidence of things not seen. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you disciples, but you're not able to bear it now. Well, wait a minute. If that's all there is to it, then why did Jesus say, you've been me for three and a half years and you ain't got it yet? And, but you're not able to bear it now. There's many things I want to tell you, but you can't bear them now. But with the Holy Ghost, the comfort of which the Holy Ghost, when he comes, he'll speak of me for all that this Father has given is given unto me. Therefore, I said, he'll speak of me and show you things which will come to pass. Hallelujah. This lady sends me every book of the Bible she has study courses on, and it's all over the world. And she wanted to join up with us. I asked her, or she asked me first thing, are you saved? I've got to know if you're saved. I said, lady, I'm a saved as I know I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, press the door to mark the prize. How come God? She said, praise God, I feel the Holy Ghost. All right? Then I asked her, may I ask you a question? Are you baptized and had the circumcision of the heart baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? She laughed. Thought that was a joke. She said, I'm baptized in fire. Well, you've got half of it done. Do you understand that? I'm going to tell you something. Now, you may not like me. You might like the way I look, like this, whatever, old fat and ugly. That's all fine. You're as ugly as I am, all you can do is try to stay clean. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you one thing. If we only have one person that sits in this church, you're going to know the truth. Bless the Lord God. I'm going to, no, no. Because the whole church world out there says baptism doesn't do anything for you. Well, my Bible says different. I don't know what you're reading out of. I don't know what. I, I read her whole, she sent me the book of the Revelation. I went through one chapter there and got almost choked to death. My God, there's no way I can. If, if any man transgress in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. What is the doctrine of Christ? What is the doctrine of Christ? Ask any preacher. I was on, I was on a TV station over in Houston for, uh, for 10 years. I was only one God preacher on that station. And when I'd say, how have you been taught Christ? Let me see Christ. I said, we don't well, know what you're talking about. As you've been taught Christ, the deception in the last days is an anti-Christ. Let's go on to Christ for about 5 or 10 minutes to make sure we're on the rock. Colossians 2 talks about the, the full acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. There is a mystery there. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh. Oh, no, Brother Beard, son of God was. Second person of the Godhead. I'll show you that that is a beast in the last days. That's the false son of God. I call heaven and earth a record. Without controversy, 1 Timothy 3, 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. See, you have to understand who he is. The Son of God is the Father revealed. Amen. Case closed. That's it in a capsule description. You want to, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The words that I speak are not mine. He's the one doing the works. How many dead folks do I have to raise? Blind eyes do I have to open before you understand that I'm not doing these works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. Dwelleth there is katakeo. It's a Greek word that means housed permanently. Never to leave ever again throughout the world and eon and ages to come. Hallelujah. 